These three rules will change the way that you write songs, and if you follow them, I guarantee that you'll become a better songwriter. Rule one, steal everything. Artists are nothing more than robbers breaking and entering at midnight, and you should steal relentlessly. I'm not saying you should plagiarize another artist's work. All great artists plunder as if no one is watching, but there is honor among thieves. Still, you should always be hunting for things that excite and inspire you. When you hear something that makes you feel anything, snatch it and hide it in your pocket. Then, when it comes time to work on your own ideas, take out the things you've stolen and remake them in your own way. Hans Zimmer describes music as a conversation. The only way to continue the discussion is to build on what came before. When seen through your artistic lens, that becomes your response in the musical discussion. For example, a guitar riff from the Propagandi song Hate, Myth, Muscle, and Etiquette caught my inspiration. While writing the song Love Sucks, I took the riff, changed the notes and the rhythm, but tried to keep the same feeling I had when I first heard it. This was my criminal response to the conversation. Rule two, collaborate often. You probably believe every artistic idea you have is a stroke of genius passed down from the muses straight into your brain. Perfect and foolproof. I hate to break it to you, but the fool bit is the only accurate part. You need a high level of narcissism and self-belief to be an artist, but sometimes that ego can get in the way of a great idea. Whether it's getting too close to an idea to see how heavy and bloated it's become, or mistaking a shining chest for riches when it's actually fool's gold. We need other people because other people have great ideas. You would only try to rob a bank with a getaway driver, so you should always try to have other musicians around when you need to make a quick escape. Everyone has a different set of skills that they carry in their toolbox. You may know a singer who's much more creative in developing complex harmonies, or a drummer who knows when to pull back and keep things simple. You could spend 100 lifetimes trying to learn every aspect of songwriting, or you could work with people who fill the gaps in your abilities. For example, when writing Love Sucks, I envisioned a larger-than-life ending with a call and response that repeated an earlier section. It was a powerful moment, but my bass player Topher had an idea that changed the dynamic of the song. Instead of repeating the section, he suggested I remove some lyrics and just scream the same line over top of him. This made it feel like I was losing my mind trying to get the attention of the subject of the song. Doing so created a forceful moment that bookends the song's emotion. This moment may not have happened if I wasn't open to collaboration. Three, stick to the emotion. Not only are we thieves and fools, but musicians are also drug dealers. We deal in emotions and our songs are mood altering drugs. People give us their hands and allow us to guide their emotions for minutes at a time. It's our responsibility to make sure that every musical decision we make, whether it's chord progression, melody, lyrics, and even rhythm, serve the emotional highs and lows. Imagine you're in a good mood and throw on your favorite summer playlist. You're bouncing around your apartment, vibing with the rhythm, singing about the carefree joys of summer when the song takes a dark turn. You've entered a slow, dirge-like prison in a minor key that slogs along while the vocalist belly aches over how the destruction of the rainforest will inevitably lead to the downfall of the human race. Then it's back to the bouncy fun time chorus as if nothing happened. You feel sick to your stomach, betrayed, and unsafe. You have emotional whiplash. What are the chances you'll listen to that song again? The most important question you must ask yourself when developing elements of a song is does this fit the emotion? If it doesn't, flush it before the cops show up. For example, Love Sucks is about falling in love unexpectedly. It has the drywall of a typical love song, but it's painted with irony. In the second verse, I borrowed a line from the Elton John song, Can You Feel the Love Tonight, where Elton suggests that love sees no difference between kings and vagabonds. A beautiful sentiment. I took the line and twisted it around to say that love can make fools of us all, and it will when you least expect it. So you should be open to it because, like a thief in the night, it could be coming for you next. Love can turn 